through the prayers of our holy fathers lord jesus christ our god have mercy on us and save us amen just like we reflected in the first part about how to acquire true faith my dear friends we we will try and go a step further and understand what this is really about what the holy fathers are trying to teach us is just rather than just focusing on certain readings and certain words and tears and prayers you know when we are engaged in prayer the kind of prayer that they want us to focus on is that which gives birth to stillness you know the book of psalms tells us be still and know that i am god that is when real prayer happens when we stand in awe before the lord a lot of times during the divine liturgy though the liturgy is always about several types of prayers that uh, the choir and the people and the priest are praying i try as much as possible to focus on those small moments of silence in the divine liturgy because that is what is more awesome than all the words that we would want to possibly pray we need to give time to ourselves my dear friends to spend time in solitude in real prayer in stillness so prayer that is just focused on reading something or saying a certain kind of words it is just the faith of hearsay but the kind of faith that i have been trying to reflect on through the life of saint peter of damascus is the faith of contemplation you know saint isaac the syrian he says contemplation is more sure than hearsay for the ordinary initial faith of the orthodox is born of natural knowledge and from this faith are born born devotion to god fasting and vigil reading of the psalms prayer and the questioning of those with experience it is such practices that give birth to the soul's virtues that is to the constant observance of the commandments and of moral conduct through this observance comes great faith hope and the perfect love the ravishes the intellect to god in prayer when one is united with god spiritually as saint neolus puts it so the words of prayer are actually written once and for all so that he who wishes to present his intellect right motionless meaning being still before the holy and life creating trinity may always pray one and the same prayer this is the beauty of the jesus prayer the simplicity and the awesomeness of the prayer is just that it is so simple that anybody can pray all that we got to keep saying repeatedly over over again day and night through every breath is lord jesus christ son of god have mercy on me a sinner with every breath the intellect itself has the sense that it is seen as though at a time it is utterly impossible for it to see anything for it is imageless formless colorless undisturbed undistracted motionless matterless entirely transcending all the things that can be thought of or apprehended and perceived in the created world the intellect my dear friends should communion should commune rather with god in deep peace and with perfect calm having only god in mind that is what happens when we repeatedly call upon the name of the lord 
until our inter intellect is seized with rapture, as it were, and found worthy to pray or say the Lord's Prayer as it should be said. This is what we are told by Saint Philemon and Saint Irene as well, as by the holy apostles, the martyrs and all other holy men. Anything other than this, my dear friends, is just illusion born of self-conceit. For God is infinite and uncircumscribed and the intellect that returns to itself must be in a similar state. So that through grace, the intellect may experience the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is why St. Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. These are the words of St. Paul. So my dear friends, for this reason we must persist. Like I suggested to you, two words to underline in the first session on the same theme. I would encourage you all to underline this word, persist. We must persist in our contemplative practice so that through this enduring persistence, our intellect is drawn in longing towards the blessed Lord. For intellect does not find something that is superior to sensible realities. It cannot, it cannot direct its desire towards it. We need to be in a position, my dear friends, to abandon the things to which our intellect has been long accustomed to. Just as the compassionate and the dispassionate are not greatly harmed by the affairs of this life since they manage them well. So those who have received great gifts of grace are not harmed since they ascribe their achievements to God. As I end this second reflection, my dear friends, I encourage us all to pray the Jesus prayer as often as possible. Remember, the words are very simple in this prayer. It teaches us to focus on only one person, God. All that the prayer says or teaches us is this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, especially that of Saint Peter of Damascus, have mercy on us and save us. Amen.